Hi, my name is Anshul Gulham, and I'm a rising sophomore at Yale University. I've been working with Professor Elliot Feibusch of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory to do a research paper and make a presentation on the layout and display of network graphs on a sphere. So before we get into the layout and display part, let's talk about what network graphs are in the first place. Network graphs are very simple. At their core, they are a set of vertices along with a set of edges. And each edge is a pair of two vertices. Now, network graphs are normally displayed on paper using node link diagrams, where nodes represent vertices and links represent edges. Now, as you can see in the diagram on the bottom right, your nodes are represented by the blue dots and your edges are represented by the lines connecting the blue dots. There's two different kinds of node link diagrams or two different kinds of graphs, directed and undirected. In undirected graphs, the edges simply connect two different nodes. In directed graphs, the edges not only connect two different nodes, but also specify which node comes first and which node comes second. For example, there is an edge that currently connects node number one and node number two in the graph shown. And the specific direction shown is that the edge goes from node number one to node number two. Let's talk about the current state of 2D visualization before we jump into 3D spherical visualization. There are many different softwares, such as Gephi, that implement many different 2D layout algorithms. There are some simple algorithms, such as circular and radial, radial axis, but there's a, some much more complicated algorithms as well. The type of algorithms we'll mostly be focusing on in this situation is the force-directed algorithms. And these are algorithms where each node is modeled as an electric charge. And the algorithm consists of using these electric charges as well as the repulsive and attractive forces between them to converge to a final graph layout after many iterations. There's a couple examples of this. The best example is the fruchterman rheingold layout algorithm from 1991. And that's what we'll be using to now, that's what we'll be adapting in our future 3D spherical visualization. There's also the Force Atlas 1 and 2 visualizations, homegrown by Gephi, which are, have been described in a very nice research paper that's available online. There are a couple other force-directed algorithms as well that are slightly more complicated. For example, the Yifan Hu multi-level layout algorithm. Finally, let's talk about a few of the challenges of 2D visualization. The first is that the entire graph must be visible at once. In a 3D visualization, you can sometimes hide half of the graph behind uh, an opaque layer if you want to, and that'll give us a graph where only half the graph is visible at once, and you can rotate around to see other parts of the graph. But in a 2D visualization, you're forced to see the entire graph at once, no matter how cluttered it might be. Second, overly complicated graphs can be confusing, especially when the crossings between different edges get so close to each other that you can't distinguish anymore, them anymore. And finally, it's often difficult to draw directed graphs without clutter. And what I mean by that is in order to show directed graphs in a node link diagram, you're going to need to draw some arrows. And having so many arrows in a small space can cause the entire graph to get cluttered and to reduce the quality of your work. For these reasons, it's worth it to check out some 3D visualization techniques as well. So what are the advantages of 3D visualizations? The first is that the entire graph doesn't need to be visible at once, as we talked about earlier. Also, for any node in a 3D visualization, you can rotate the sphere or whatever 3D visualization you're using in order to place the node of interest at the center. And that'll allow you to really examine the edges that emanate from that node very carefully. The other idea is the possibility of interactivity. We use, uh, we use a browser-based implementation as well as pair view and visit in order to achieve user-controlled rotation, translation, and zoom. And finally, using these visualization tools such as pair view and visit also allow us to use effects such as lighting, shading, and color. Now let's talk about some of the prior visualization work that's been done. 
Force directed algorithms have been around for a long time. The earliest examples are from Tut and Eats, but mostly we'll be focusing on, as I mentioned, Fruchterman and Rheingold's algorithm, which relies on some positive and negative attractive and repulsive forces. Now, there has been some work done on spherical graph visualization in the past, most recently, and most recently by Perry, Yin, Gray, and Kaborov, who proposed two different algorithms for 3D spherical graph visualization. One of them deals with multidimensional scaling, and the other one is where the graph is the graph is drawn in 2D and then projected onto a 3D sphere. There's been some other work, such as a user study done by Brad and McMurchy, and some work by Munzner and Sprenger on similar ideas, such as concentric circles and hyperbolic tree visualizations. Next, let's talk about the visualization pipeline that allows us to go from raw data to final product. First, we have our input file. It's written bib here because our original uh, test files were citation maps. So they were maps and bibliographies of papers. But what we're not we're doing is we can take any kind of input file, put that through a parser and get a dictionary of nodes and connections or edges between those nodes. If we pass that through a layout algorithm, we can generate a set of spherical coordinates for our nodes. If we take our nodes and we take those the spherical coordinates, we can have a node creation algorithm that allows us to create a VTK file. If we plug that VTK file into Python, sorry, not Python, into Paraview, for example, we can get a nodes VTK file. Similarly, if we plug the spherical coordinates for the nodes, as well as the set of edges into an edge or arc creation algorithm, we can get a VTK file that creates a, a set of edges along a sphere for that, for those nodes in particular. If we take those two VTK files and simultaneously input them into Paraview or Visit, then the whole picture comes together and we can see our visualization clearly. If we include a little bit of JavaScript code using 3.js as well, we can also display this in an inbuilt browser application. Now, how can we use our spherical graph algorithms? Well, our spherical graph algorithm has to have really three main qualities. First, it needs to be equally distributed. Second, the high degree nodes should ideally be spaced far apart. And finally, there needs to be a uniform edge density across the entire graph of the sphere, the entire graph and the entire sphere. The overall algorithm that we use is similar to FR, the FR algorithm, but modified for our use. First, we define a static constant k, which is 4 pi divided by the number of nodes. The reason why we define this is we want to calculate the area that each node should have to itself if we're going to try to get an equal density of nodes all across the sphere. And since the surface area of a sphere of radius 1 is 4 pi, that's the formula. Now, we can assign a random Cartesian coordinate one unit from the origin to every node, and then we can run the so-called update algorithm on, this, uh, on these initial coordinates until they converge to a final location. Now, what is this update algorithm, you can ask? And this is really the key of the paper. The update algorithm is as follows. For each node n in v, we can take n dot position to be the original Cartesian coordinates of the point n. And for each n, we can also create an n dot update vector, which contains the vector by which we'll be updating the, the n dot position every time we run the update algorithm. Next, we'll be going through every pair of nodes. And for every pair of nodes, they will ideally share a repulsive force. So they will be moved apart from each other along the great circle that connects those two nodes. Finally, once we get through all of these pairs of nodes, we can iterate through every pair of nodes where, uh, where there is an edge connecting them. And since there is an edge connecting them, we can bring them closer together. Here's an example of what the update algorithm looks like when we run it for 50, visualize, uh, 50 iterations. So as you'll see in a second here, there is a uniform uh, pattern in the beginning, but that pattern immediately breaks off. But as we run more and more iterations, the nodes get closer and closer to their final locations.
Next, let's talk about the algorithm customizations. There's really two customizations we made here. We had a choice between uh, between using the Euclidean distance between two nodes as their official distance, or the distance along the great the, the great arc that connects any two points on a sphere as the official distance between any two nodes. And we decided to go with the second option. Additionally, we also had some options uh, regarding how we would update the nodes after we had calculated all of the distances that they should be traveling based on the attractive and repulsive forces that were assigned to them. And we decided that instead of moving them along the true force vector and then scaling them down back down to the sphere, we would move them along the arc in the direction of the force vector. Finally, we also experimented with trying to move terminal points, which is our own term for low degree nodes or degree one nodes off the sphere. And we saw what those results look like as well. Now, what is Paraview? Paraview and Visit are 3D visualization tools that have many advantages. They can handle large amounts of data. They can display multiple VTK files at once. And they also have a bunch of different options in how you can view that data without having to do any extra coding. They allow for color mapping, line style, selection operators. And most importantly, they have uh, there's an embedded software that allows you to convert a series of files into uh, into a video, into an MP4. Here's what goes on when we try to visualize a graph and visit. As you can see, the visit tool has a capability to rotate our sphere in any direction we want. We can move it clockwise, counterclockwise, we can move it in all three directions. In a second, you'll see that we can also zoom in and zoom out. And uh, now there's a little bit more of rotating, but as you'll see, we can also actually add in new VTK files to make the sphere transparent or not transparent, depending on the type of graph that we want to create in our data. And this is generally what visualization and visit, Paraview is very similar, but this is what visualization and visit looks like. Next, we also created a browser-based implementation, which does almost the same thing as Paraview and Visit, but for this specific situation, we realized that some researchers might not know how to use Paraview or Visit initially. And so what we decided to do is we decided to create a browser-based implementation using 3.js. Our code ends up being compatible with all major operating systems, browsers, and devices, and we can do much of the same things on this browser-based implementation as we could do on Paraview or Visit. So for example, our implementation supports rotation, translation, and zoom functionality all through the maps. Finally, what are some things that we're looking forward to in the future? This is a very important question. The main thing we're looking forward to is we want to improve the current algorithm efficiency. Currently, the algorithm takes one to two minutes to run on a 700 node graph, and we can't visualize how the nodes change their positions as the update algorithm runs every time. So we want to be able to extend our code in order to be able to visualize the algorithm and to reduce the amount of time that the algorithm takes to run. Next, we also want to develop new spherical algorithms since this is a very new field of research. And we also want to put spherical visualization into 3D uh, real world practice, perhaps through, for example, a user study. Finally, and this is the most interesting, we want to develop a quantitative measure of algorithm effectiveness. Previously, we'd outlined three different qualitative measures of how good an algorithm was. But if we can introduce a quantitative measure, then we can put a stamp kind of on which algorithms for 3D visualization are really the best. And that's it for this presentation. Thank you so much for your attention.